And this is the story of why Jesus Christ was crucified. Well, the priest had to turn over because only the priest can offer a sacrifice. But Rome had to accept him. And they have to go along with the, with the verdict in spite of them. Yet everybody is guilty. So they had to crucify him. They didn't have to scourge him, but they had to crucify him. But they did scourge him again. Why? Because that was also the purpose of God. The scourging is for the healing of our body. And his, his death was for our lives, that we may live. Because God so loved the world that he gave. The, act, the, the activity, uh, the activity on the part of God is always there. He's a motiv motivating force behind everything that is done upon this earth, throughout his universe. So, in order to heal the body and the spirit, he had to have Jesus Christ being crucified and scourged before that, so that both body and spirit will go on living forever. And in other words, you cannot blame one certain group for that, because no man is able to go through the plan of God without his, his uh, doing it. God is the one that wanted a family. Therefore, he had to give, to give a sacrifice for all them for atonement. Because God cannot be present in the presence of sin. So how do you have a family? You have to atone for their guilt beforehand so that you may have a family. Bring them to repentance, to the obedience of the law. When they are his children throughout all the, uh, the experiences of life, in obedience, in serving God, and believing in God, and following God, and doing His will. That's the only way you can have salvation. That's one reason why Peter said, when they asked him, what must we do? Well, he said, have to repent from all of your sins, be baptized, washed, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that will make it possible for you to have life. And that's the reason why Jesus Christ was crucified, contrary to the law of Moses, which he himself gave. He had to involve the world in it through the agency of Rome that employed soldiers from all across Europe. So they were representatives of all the Gentiles, all the nations. Israel was represented by the priesthood. So both of them, both factions, were guilty of it. They were participating in the action of the crucifixion. But they were doing it all according to the will of God. Just like the devil entered into the Garden of Eden and he did what he did in the Garden of Eden. He received first man and woman. It was all contrived by God, which is an awesome plan. It's a mystery to men. Men would never have thought that to do that beyond him. A science fiction, so to speak, you know, it defies the imagination. But with God, all things are possible. And he can bring all the details according to his will that his son be guilty even though he's innocent, take upon himself all the sins of humanity, not only of Israel, not only of the Jews, but all the world has, have to repent and receive an atonement through the sacrifice of Christ. So to that end, you know, every knee shall bow to him when he comes. 
and confess that he's the Lord, the master, just like Israel had to confess that God in the, in the, uh, in the, in the serpent, that was the reason for the death, because he was going to take their sins. And what do you do when you have a transgression like that and you have somebody sending I mean, a person? Well, with another person, first it was a serpent, a serpent of brass. Well, you turn to worship that. And since that day, all Christians, so called Christians, they worship the cross. They don't worship Jesus Christ. They worship the cross. Just like children of Israel were serving the cross, their time. You read in uh, Second, uh, Second Kings, when, he's, when uh, Hezekiah became a king, until his day, the children of Israel were offering incense to the serpent. That was a tendency of men. But you read in the New Testament about the shame of the cross, about the curse that hangs on a man that is hanging up. It's not something pleasant that God wants to see. It's the iniquities of man that continue in that evil worship, thinking they're doing right, but they're not serving God, they're not serving Jesus Christ. They're serving what they think they should be doing. And you do not hang around with the cross on your, around your neck, because that's the shame of the cross that you hang around with. That was done 2,000 years ago. That's, that's no more. Just like Paul said, we knew Christ according to the flesh once when he was alive. But now we don't know him anymore according to the flesh. So they still have Jesus Christ hanging on the cross. It doesn't make sense. He was on the cross for the sins of humanity. But he was dead. After that, he was taken off the cross. He was buried and dead for three days, but then he rose to heaven and is a spirit being now again. He doesn't look anything like he was. But you see, you know, the, the, the picture of, of uh, Christ hanging on the cross with wounds in his hands and legs and all that. That's not him. That used to be him, but that's not him anymore. That's idol worship. And that's not pleasing to God. That's not pleasing to God that you constantly bring that death to remembrance. That was done a long time ago. Just like they say, it was all done in Calvary. Thing you know that they came up with later. There was no such a thing as Calvary at the time. The sacrifice of God was given once and for all, and it's no more there. Its impact is with us to this very day. But Jesus Christ is no longer on the cross, just like the serpent was no longer hanging in the wilderness for Israel to look to. And as King Hezekiah, righteous King Hezekiah, he finally burned the serpent the brass serpent, because the, the people were worshipping it, just like they worship the cross now. That was not the way to, to worship God. Worship God when you obey his Torah, obey his laws, commandments, just like Jesus Christ told us. Unless you keep my commandments, you have no life in you. And don't think that I came to do away with the Torah or the commandments. And to those who will say to him, Lord, Lord, we've done all things in your name. We're your people. You are our God. He will tell them, 
I don't even know you. Because you do not walk in, your, in my law, in the law of God. So this is the purpose of it. You have to worship God and live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And appreciate what he did for you in the cross. But don't worship the cross. Don't worship vain things. Don't live in fables. Live in the truth and obey the truth. Walk in the truth. Become like Jesus Christ. He says, I am the gate. I am the way. I am the light. That will give you life. But not fables that people go for. This is what the Gentiles were doing. They were creating images of idols and they were serving them. Just like many Christians serve the cross, bow down to the cross, walk in processions with the cross in front of them, hang it on the neck. That doesn't make sense. These are idol worshippers. Just like Israel was idol worshippers, burning incense to the cross of the day, serpent. That was the intent. That was not the intent of God. 